A while ago, my Why Nobody Plays the Egyptian God card video hit 1 million views, and that was a huge deal at the time. I made a celebratory video because for a Yu-Gi-Oh! discussion video to hit that kind of view count is just, it's so unlikely. I mean, every once in a while you see a big Yu-Gi-Oh! video pop up, and when a Yu-Gi-Oh! video hits, a uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! discussion video that is, hits 100,000 views. That's a pretty big deal. Of course, anime clips are going to hit way over millions of views, and that's perfectly fine. But for a discussion video, no matter if it's positive or negative or just neutral, for that type of video to hit 1 million views is just so unlikely and that was a huge deal to me at the time and I never thought it would happen again but it did so a year ago I uploaded a video titled why pot of greed is banned and just recently just yesterday when this video is uploaded that video hit 1 million views and I just I can't believe it it is truly crazy it is just mind-blowing to me and while I want to take as much credit as possible for that video being successful I mean I obviously scripted it and edited it and uploaded it I can't take all of it because I think a lot of the reason that video really blew up and it really was like an overnight success. I believe that video had 300,000 views by the end of the first week with the pot of greed video in particular. I think the reason that one blew up so much more than any other video I've ever posted and probably will ever post is because of pot of greed itself. It is by far one of the most iconic Yu Yu cards ever released and it is definitely without a doubt the most iconic spell card ever released in Yu Gi Oh. It might not be up there with things like blue eyes and Exodia, but as far as spell cards go in particular, it is way more recognizable in something like Monster Reborn or Regeki or Dark Hole. Those cards are obviously very recognizable and a lot of people know about them, but nothing really trumps Pot of Greed as far as spell cards go, which is why I think that video really did blow up. And in today's video, I want to delve deeper into that discussion. Why is Pot of Greed so iconic? And I want to look at this from three distinct groups. First, we're going to look at it from a general standpoint, from people that don't really play a lot of card games games. Maybe they watch the original series, but don't really play any sort of games like that in 2019. I also then want to take it one step further and look at it from people that do play other card games. Maybe are interested in playing Yu-Gi-Oh! someday. Why does Pot of Greed seem iconic to both of those two groups? They don't really play Yu-Gi-Oh! that much. And then lastly, we're going to look at why even within the Yu-Gi-Oh! community, Pot of Greed is a pretty big deal. So first up, why do people outside of the Yu-Gi-Oh! community really recognize Pot of Greed? Because it's really hard for that to happen, right? I mean, if you go up to some on the street and ask them to name a Yu-Gi-Oh card, chances are they probably won't be able to name any of them, but they might be able to name a few of them. And one of the few that they probably would be able to name is Pot of Greed. Maybe Blue Eyes comes up there, Exodia, Dark Magician. But outside of those four cards, it's pretty unlikely that they would know any modern cards, especially, but even more old school cards that people did play back 10, 15 years ago, probably aren't going to come across them. They're going to just talk about these four big ones, and Pot of Greed is the only spell card. And I think one of the reasons that has happened is because Pot of Greed really is a meme card, even more so than those monster cards. Pot of Greed, and what does it do? I mean, if you go in this comment section, I bet there will be tons of comments that say, what does Pot of Greed do? I don't know what it does, etc., etc. And even in videos where at the very beginning, I mentioned that there's going to be a lot of those comments, people still leave them. People still think they're leaving original Pot of Greed comments when they put those things down there, and that's perfectly fine. You know, I'm willing to embrace the meme because it is obviously a huge reason those videos got so big. Any video of Pot of Greed in the title, usually does pretty well, but I think that one of the things that really makes a card so iconic is just that meme status to people that aren't even playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Pot of Greed is one of the few cards to actually manage to do that, even outside of card game players, but just people in general. I think a lot of people do know the Pot of Greed meme, and that is part of the reason that it's maintained its iconic status for all these years. Why is Pot of Greed recognizable among card game communities? You know, when I go like to Hearthstone and stuff, and I watch people play those, Exodia gets brought up a lot. There are a lot of Exodia decks in Hearthstone, which just basically means you have to draw a very specific combination of cards, and then you just instantly win. But Pot of Greed also comes up, because people activate a card like Arcane Intellect, and they're like, oh, I activate Pot of Greed to draw two cards from my deck. But obviously it's not just Hearthstone. Magic has Ancestral Recall, which actually predates Pot of Greed, and that lets you draw three cards, not just two cards. And obviously Pokemon has Bill and then a bunch of other crazy draw effects, especially with supporters, which some of them draw up to seven cards, which is absolutely insane. But what I really think is important here and why Pot of Greed really resonates with so many card game players, especially ones interested in getting into Yu-Gi-Oh, maybe they played Magic or Pokemon or Hearthstone or whatever, is that Pot of Greed as a card and the reasons that it has to stay banned in Yu-Gi-Oh and probably will be banned forever really do outline some of the big differences between Yu-Gi-Oh and other card games. Specifically speaking, I think Pot of Greed as a card really does go to show why mana matters, why lands 
coins matter, why energy cards or supporter cards matter a lot for those other card games. Because one of the biggest differences between Yu-Gi-Oh! and the other card games out there is those costs that don't really get found on Yu-Gi-Oh! cards. When Yu-Gi-Oh! was first created, I think the tribute summon was like the biggest drawback. You know, you had to tribute smaller monsters to bring out bigger ones if you wanted those bigger monsters on the field. But as Yu-Gi-Oh! has developed and as it's been around for many, many years, obviously tribute summoning isn't really around as much. And special summoning, I know the joke going around is special summoning isn't even special anymore, and that really is true. Your normal summon does matter a lot. You know, there are effects out there that only trigger off of normal summon, and when you see people building decks, they want to put the best normal summons in their decks as possible, but they don't want to put too many to break their hands. And I think when you look at a card like Pot of Greed and see why does this card actually have to be banned forever, what you realize is that one of the biggest reasons is that there isn't a land requirement for playing the card. It is completely free. Because how a card like Arcane Intellect can exist in Hearthstone, and while it is a good card, it isn't even a staple card in every single mage deck, and one of the reasons is, or the biggest reason is, is that there is a mana requirement, three mana. So the turn that you do that, if you're doing it on turn three, you can basically make no other plays. However, with Pot of Greed, obviously if you're a Yu-Gi-Oh player, you know this, but during the turn that you use Pot of Greed, it doesn't restrict you at all. The card has zero restrictions. It's a normal spell card, which is perfectly fine, because you can do it as your first play, or your last play, or your middle play, and you can do more plays during the turn that you use it. It's perfectly fine. And that's probably one of the many reasons that Pot of Greed is too overpowered and can never be returned to Yu-Gi-Oh, because on that Pot of Greed video, the one that just hit a million views, there are a lot of comments, hundreds of comments, in fact, from non-Yu-Gi-Oh players saying, well, it doesn't make any sense to me why Pot of Greed is banned. Why can't it come back? Because it seems like every deck these days is drawing a million cards and searching a million cards anyway. Why not just add Pot of Greed back into the game? And as I describe in that video, I'll briefly say it here as well, because other cards are searching, that's not enough of a reason for Pot of Greed to come back. In fact, if Pot of Greed came back, it would only make those already extremely consistent, extremely powerful decks even more consistent by having a Saki draw two card in their deck with no drawback. And I wouldn't say that every single comment from non-Yu-Gi-Oh players doesn't understand why Pot of Greed has to remain banned. I've actually gotten tons of comments from people, tons of really positive comments from people that said, you know what, going into this video, I didn't understand why this card was so powerful in Yu-Gi-Oh, but coming out of it, I really do get it now, and that is something I really like to see. I don't know everything about all the other card games, even card games that I play like Hearthstone or card games that I played like Pokemon, I never got nearly as competitive in those games as I currently am in Yu-Gi-Oh! So it's cool to me as a content creator, especially after a million views on that video, to know that I can actually describe not just in Yu-Gi-Oh! terms, but general terms using card advantage and card economy and all those discussions, actually explain to people that don't even play Yu-Gi-Oh! why a card like Pot of Greed is so overpowered. That brings us to my final category, and that's why is Pot of Greed so iconic to Yu-Gi-Oh! players specifically? Obviously, cards that are older and from the anime especially are always going to be iconic, and some of the reasons that I've talked about previously, like the meme status does matter a lot to Yu-Gi-Oh players, but I think for competitive Yu-Gi-Oh players especially, why Pot of Greed is so intriguing is that it really is the benchmark for what the best draw spell can look like. Graceful Charity also gets there as well, that's a whole other discussion, because Graceful Charity is a little bit more complicated, you know, you're drawing cards, you're discarding cards, it's actually not a plus in card advantage, but Pot of Greed is, it's a straight plus one, and it's the card that every other draw spell has to be sort of put against. You have to see how much better or how much worse is this draw spell from Pot of Greed, because Pot of Greed by itself is one of the most broken cards ever released in Yu-Gi-Oh! despite having a very simple effect. So whenever you make a new draw spell, it has to be balanced from Pot of Greed in some way, shape, or form. I've actually done an entire video about this, if you've seen it, that said how Konami balanced Pot of Greed, and they put a bunch of restrictions on newer cards. We see Pot of Desires, players are willing to banish the top 10 cards other deck face down with a hard once return restriction just to draw those two cards. So obviously if players are willing to do that, you can just see how good drawing two cards is in a Yu-Gi-Oh game. And whenever I talk about Pot of Greed, I'm sure you'll see him in this comment section as well, I get people suggesting like one text change to make it a little bit more balanced. And what's funny, especially from players that don't play Yu-Gi-Oh is that they make one change not realizing that it's still overpowered. For example, a lot of people see Pot of Greed and see that it says draw two cards. They're like, oh, it's easy to make this card balance. You just make it only draw one. What they might not realize is that Upstart Goblin, a card that did just that, but also gave your opponent a thousand life points was so broken that they had to limit it because it was being played as a three of in almost every deck out there. What's funny is that you can add on a bunch of restrictions to Pot of Greed and a lot of times it is still playable. Pot of Desires is a very extreme example, but even things like Pot of Extravagance or even things like Trade and where you have to 
discard a card. Those are all great examples of how even adding on one big drawback compared to the original Pot of Greed still makes for a very competitive card under the right circumstances. Anyway, I think that's pretty much all I have to say about why Pot of Greed is such an iconic card. I will put the two videos that I mentioned at the end of this video. So we'll have the video on how Konami fixed Pot of Greed and compare it to a bunch of other draw spells. And obviously, just in case you haven't seen it or if you want a refresher, I'll post that original Why Pot of Greed is banned video as well. And I'll give a special shout out to any of you guys that watched that video one year ago, maybe as your first DZ video and you subscribed and you stuck around for the past year. I really appreciate you guys. It's uh, really cool seeing a video like that when they go way higher than my subscriber count. I can still remember a time when I was very excited if a video hit 1k views and then it became if a video hit 10k views, I was just ecstatic. So for a video to hit 1 million views is just absolutely insane. Thank you guys so much for all the support over the past couple years. Anyway though, I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.